Cincinnati, Ohio, the New York Mets play the Cincinnati Reds. Let's get right into it. Bottom of the fifth, runner on first, one out. There goes the runner. Oh, that was a hit and run. Hit and run. Safe arrival at second. Newman down to first. Safe is the call. It's an infield. Well, what is it? A single, a fielder's choice? What happened? Here comes Showalter wondering what happened as well. A buck's got a gripe. What we're looking at is the base runner's hand and the fielder's glove. Oh, oh, maybe that, not. Definitely viewable. That's not a reviewable play type. That was mighty. Show Walter talks to the umpires, and the umpires agree to convene. Here's what they're going to consider during their conference. The fielder has the right to field a batted ball, and the runner has the right to run the bases at any other time other than that. So on a throw or even a ball hit into the outfield, an infielder without possession of the ball can't obstruct the runner block the base path. That's illegal. In turn, on a batted ball like an infield ground ball, the runner, no matter what they're doing, can't run into or interfere with the fielder entitled to field the batted ball. That's also illegal. So looking back at this play, it's, it's a batted ball, so we know that the fielder has the right of way until he fields the ball. It sure looks like the runner's hand prevents the fielder from fielding the ball, so that is interference. This is an unusual play here. I mean, well, that's, well, what do you think? They're not going to change their ruling. Showalter says, how could all four of you miss the call? You want to be a crew chief? This isn't even a call that you made. But you are sticking up for someone on your crew, especially after consultation and nothing changed. This is clearly interference. This is an incorrect no call. But there's more to it than just that as Buck gets tossed. And Showalter's been tossed. And I think that tells us all we need to know about Myers being safe. This is Buck's first ejection. Buck's first ejection is Mets manager, but as I said, there's more to the rule than just interference. Here's part two. What kind of interference is it? He should get tossed here because that was interference. He's the basic up. interference call here is rule 601A10, wherein the runner fails to avoid a fielder fielding a batted ball. The runner's out, everyone else goes back to time of pitch bases, except the batter goes to first. That's the basic rule, but there's another option here. Interferes with Lindor actually catching the ball. Go back a little and you see provision six of this rule states that if a base runner willfully and deliberately interferes with a batted ball, or a fielder in the act of fielding a batted ball to break up a double play, you can actually call that runner and the batter runner both out for interference and the interference of that teammate. This could be a double play due to willful like and deliberate interference. Do you think that the runner's action here was willful and deliberate? If so, it's a double play. If not, it's just garden variety interference and only that runner is out and the batter gets first base. Yes. Oh. The reason for ejection is simple histrionic gestures by pointing to the entire crew. As for the reason for the missed call, I worry when I see a second base umpire moving on an infield grounder like that. I know the mechanic, but I worry about umpires taking themselves out of position. Moore is in B position for umpires on the second base side, and I think maybe if you stay there, especially working in throughout the play, there's a greater likelihood of actually seeing the interference because you're still as opposed to moving. Heads up at the plate and Friedel. Well, Murphy's Law says that Cincinnati has to capitalize on that, so New York loses a run and loses the game by one. Myers flips to Diaz, and that'll do it. But hey, at least it wasn't as blatant as A-Rod, although they did correct that one. And here comes Buck Showalter.